An important religious freedom story out of Washington, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is meeting this week with representatives of Muslim nations. The stated aim is to fight religious intolerance and discrimination. But religious rights advocates say the Organization of Islamic Cooperation wants to make criticizing Islam a crime and fear the Obama administration won't hold the line. And joining us now with more on this issue is Frank Gaffney of the Center for Security Policy. Frank, what is the Organization of Islamic Cooperation and what are its goals at this conference? Well, let me just give you his background. The president has taken great exception to the uh, claim by many Republican uh, candidates for his job that uh, he's engaged in appeasement. There is no more, I think, powerful example of the president's appeasement than what he's doing as we speak with this group, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, or OIC. The OIC is, I think of it as kind of a multinational Muslim mafia. It is uh, 57 states and Palestine that have come together to promote what is fundamentally the agenda known as Sharia. That is a totalitarian political, military, legal program that would force all of us, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, to submit to its barbaric, repressive, supremacist agenda. Mm -hmm. The OIC is seeking to do that first and foremost by trying to get the United States, which after all has a constitution that guarantees our rights, not just to freedom of religion, but to freedom of speech, mm -hmm. by getting us to agree that, well, we really can't say anything that might offend Muslims. So, and the particular people that we're talking about, the OIC, the Muslim Brotherhood, as Eric Stackelbeck just talked about now, in the halls of power of the United States government, are very easily offended, it turns out. Mm -hmm. Even if you say something true, about the Quran, about Muhammad's conduct, about Allah according to the traditions of Islam, let alone about Sharia. So this is a very worrying thing that Hillary Clinton is at the moment trying to find a way to bridge between our First Amendment rights under the Constitution of the United States and Sharia, which says you don't have those rights as a practical matter. Why is the Obama administration meeting with this group in light of what you, you say there? Well, I think it, again, comes down to the kind of appeasement that we've seen President Obama engage in throughout his time in office, his uh, successive Muslim outreach campaigns, uh, calling us a Muslim nation, uh, getting NASA to make, uh, reaching out and, uh, and pandering to the Muslims a top priority, and uh, bowing to the Saudi king. I mean, on and on. Those are some symbolic. This is much more tangible, as I would argue are two other things that are also afoot. We now have guidelines that have been recently promulgated by the Department of Homeland Security to tell all of the trainers and the materials that they use to train people in our government at state, federal, and local levels in how to deal with what the administration euphemistically calls countering violent extremism. That used to be called euphemistically by the Bush administration terrorism. Mm -hmm. In practical matters, it's, it's countering jihad. Well, under these training guidelines, we have to get the permission of what amounts to the Muslim Brotherhood in our so-called Muslim community leaderships to tell the people we need to train how to counter the enemy. This is a formula for disaster. And then finally, we've got now Senator Dick Durbin in the United States Senate trying to prevent the reauthorization of a critically needed group, really the, the last official, albeit independent, congressionally mandated institution in our government called the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom that has been monitoring and warning against and trying to hold accountable those who adhere to Sharia and others who are suppressing religious freedom around the world and for that matter trying to do it here as well. This group, the U.S. International Religious Freedom Commission, must be kept going. Senator Durbin has even indicated that He's trying to uh, get a prison turned over to the U.S. government that the Obama administration says okay. it would use to house Guantanamo Bay detainees real in quickly, Illinois. We're, we're, this is, these are Frank, crazy things to be doing. We're just about out of time, but real quickly, what's the motivation, you think, for trying to silence the commission and to get rid of it? I, well, as I say, there's a gambit here by Senator Durbin to do this prison deal, but I think fundamentally it's really this larger idea of submitting 
to Sharia. Senator Durbin has also indicated that he wants to get rid of all of the current members except basically one or two, mm -hmm. including one who is an Islamist. And uh, to turn it over to them would be to turn this vitally needed watchdog into a lapdog. I hope people will get in touch with Senator Durbin and their own senators and try to prevent this miscarriage from taking place. Indeed. Frank Gaffney, thank you so much for your time. Your insight is much appreciated. Thank you.